afternoon to everyone and, and welcome to this very special occasion. So uh, welcome to, to those of you in Dublin, in London, in Sligo, in India and elsewhere. And thank you for joining us for the Kathleen Lonsdale Chemistry Prize 2022. This is the third year of hosting the ceremony online. And although we all wish that we could be welcoming you to Academy House today, we're delighted to welcome you virtually for today's event. We warmly welcome our winner, Dr. Priyanka Ganguly, along with her family, her parents, her parents-in-law, her academic collaborators and mentors. We're also joined by Dr. Hugh Fay of Henkel Ireland. Henkel's generous sponsorship of this award is vital in enabling us to recognize excellence in early career researchers in chemistry. I should, of course, explain that I'm uh, Professor Catherine Godson. Uh, I'm from University College Dublin, and I'm here in my role as Secretary for Science of the Royal Irish Academy. OK, so since its inauguration in uh, 2000, the Kathleen Lonsdale Royal Irish Academy Chemistry Prize has worked each year with the expert members of the Physical, Chemical and Mathematical Sciences Committee of the Academy to select a winner based on the most outstanding PhD research in the general area of the chemical sciences performed on the island of Ireland. As we will hear from Dr. Christine O'Connor, chair of our judging panel, the standard of applications from early stage men and women at the start of their careers in chemistry was exceptionally high this year. As recipient of the Academy Prize, Priyanka's award-winning essay, Cal Cal Calcogenides and their composites with titanium dioxide for photocatalytic applications represented Ireland in the prestigious International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry Solvay International Prize for Young Chemists competition. Through this prize, we've been able to recognize the impressive research of many promising doctoral students in chemistry over the past several years. We're now going to hear from last year's winner, Dr. Connor Crawford, about what winning the prize meant to him. Hi, I'm Connor Crawford and I'm the recipient of the Kathleen Lonsdale Chemistry Prize for 2021 from the Royal Irish Academy. I did my PhD in the School of Chemistry at UCD and uh, the focus of my research was on furthering our understanding of the sugar coat termed a capsule that surrounds a fungi called Cryptococcus neoformans. And this fungi can cause infection in vulnerable population groups such as those especially those with um, weakened immune systems. So think of people with HIV AIDS or those about to undergo organ transplant. And um, this fungi is really a global problem and it kills around half a million people every year. Um, also, there's rising resistance to commonly used antifungal drugs. So we really needed new innovation in this space to try and create new therapies and increase our basic knowledge. And so that, our goal in the University College Dublin was to gain a molecular understanding of their interactions between the immune system and the sugars that are present on the surface of the fungi and use this basic knowledge to then translate into the rational development and design of new vaccines. Um, overall, we had some success and several of the vaccine candidates that we made in Dublin are now under investigation and testing in the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, where am I now? Uh, currently, I'm a postdoc in the Max Planck Institute in Germany, just and I live in Berlin, uh, where I still complete research in the glycosciences, so a sweet theme continues, but now in the context of the global carbon cycle. And um, <clears throat> for me in particular, we're investigating how marine organic ma matter is cycled in the ocean. And uh, I contribute to this by designing and synthesizing new molecular tools that I use with collaborators to increase our basic understanding of the kind of the carbon pump in the ocean. Um, what did the winning the prize last year mean to me? Um, winning the prize, of course, meant a lot. And its primary purpose is really to recognize individual excellence, of course, which I was really humbled to receive uh, individual ex excellence in your PhD project. However, I think it should be stated and pointed out that individual excellence does not exist in a vacuum. And so I think this prize more also speaks to the excellent environments that I was lucky to 
be a part of and uh, the teams that I was part of. And this is obviously the hard work and of other people that aren't me. And in particular, the individual labs that I was in. So my PhD professor, Stefan Oscarson's lab in UCD, or when I was a vis visiting scholar in Johns Hopkins in the lab of Arturo Castroval. And then at the higher level that the schools and the universities put a lot of hard work into creating functioning research departments. So I think this is a really a prize for us all. Thanks and congrats to this year's winner. Great to, to hear from um, Dr. Crawford and to hear how he, his important work that really develops on what he learned uh, during his PhD studies. So I'd now like to thank the expert panel, many of whom are happily joining us today virtually, for their commitment and their expertise in the very difficult task of selecting a winner. The assessors were Dr. Katarina Nesterenko, Scientific Program Manager at Science Foundation Ireland, Professor Peter Robertson, Chair of the Physical, Chemical and Mathematical Sciences Committee of the Royal Irish Academy, and Professor of Chemical Engineering at Queen's University, Belfast. Professor Sylvia Draper, Professor of Inorganic Chemistry and Head of the School of Chemistry at Trinity College, Dublin, and Professor Christine O'Connor, Assistant Head of School of Food Science and Environmental Health at TU Dublin. Now I invite Professor O'Connor, Chair of the Assessment Panel, to say a few words about this year's competition and about our winner and her work on Cal Congenies. Christine, over to you. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so I, I just wanted to mention the standard of the applications for this prize is, is extremely high each year. Um, and this year was no exception. So the assessment panel who are, as Catherine said, members of the Physical, Chemical and Mathematical Com uh, Sciences Committee of the Royal Irish Academy, went through all of these essays, the references and supporting materials submitted. And they were incredibly impressed by the research um, that these chemists are doing for their doctoral studies in third level institutes all around the island of Ireland. So thanks to the Kathleen Lonsdale Prize Assessment Panel, because it does take time to assess um, this and, and you know, it's a very high standard um, so I'd like to thank those individuals that Catherine mentioned uh, for their time and effort that's put into this evaluation. I want to also to thank all of those who entered the competition and to congratulate each individual on the excellent research that they are doing, um, because the standard is incredible and, um, and it's wonderful to see this level of science going on across Ireland. I would also like to thank Henkel for their continued support of the prize, which is very much appreciated. And I hope you uh, will let Henkel know that we have uh, are deeply appreciative of that. So we are here today to recognize the outstanding scientific achievements of our 2022 winner, Dr. Priyanka Ganguly. And Priyanka completed her PhD on Tyranny Calcat cogenides and their composites with titanium dioxide for photocatalytic applications. And this research was undertaken in Atlantic Technological University, which was formerly the Institute of Technology Sligo uh, when Priyanka was there. Um, and this was done under the supervision of Professor Suresh Pillai and Dr. Ailish Breen. Priyanka's research aimed to tackle two fundamental challenges of the 21st century, the first being sustainable energy production and the second being sustainable methods to treat environmental pollution, in particular pharmaceutical effluents and antimicrobial uh, disinfection. Priyanka's research endeavoured to harness photocatalysis to both produce hydrogen and to break down effluent pollutants. And this is a method that has shown some promise over the last decade in producing greener energy and in environmental remediation. Priyanka aimed to develop a sustainable way to produce the photocatalytic reactions that produce hydrogen and degrade pollution using our solar energy. Priyanka has published her research findings in 11 
high impact peer reviewed journal articles, and six of those she was first author. During her PhD, she also contributed to five book chapters on top of those journal articles and acted as a co-editor of a book published by IOP Publishing in 2021. And all of this, of course, was done during our pandemic as well, which must have been difficult for Priyanka. So Priyanka was also the recipient of the Institute of Chemistry of Ireland Postgraduate Award in 2020. So the Kathleen Lonsdale Assessment Panel would like to wish um, Priyanka every success in her future career. And we just want to tell her that we were very impressed mm -hmm. in the excellence of her research. So congratulations, Priyanka. I'll hand you back to Catherine. Thank you. Thanks, Christine. Really impressive and exciting work to hear about. So I'm now going to invite Dr. Hugh Fay, who's joining us on behalf of our generous sponsors, Henkel, to say a few words and indeed to present this year's prize. So over to you, Hugh. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, unbelievably, this is the sixth year that Henkel Ireland has had the honour of sponsoring this great event, and it is a real honour for us. Um, I'm delighted for a few reasons today. I'm delighted I didn't have to say cogenides. <laughs> and as a company, we are delighted to be associated with the Kathleen Lonsdale Prize. Here in Dublin, in Tala, we have 100 people working in R&D. So research in Ireland and supporting young researchers is of particular relevance to us. Something I really must emphasize that this sponsorship has actually come from Henkel headquarters in Dusseldorf. There is a, a global fund for supporting meaningful social initiatives, which is termed make an impact on tomorrow. And so the fact that the corporate jury, which is as global responsibility, supports the Kathleen Lonsdale Prize is indicative of the esteem in which this event is held. Priyanka, having read the summary of your work, it's clear that you are a most worthy winner. So all that remains is for me to congratulate you and to virtually present you with your award. Dr. Priyanka Ganguly, I present you with the Kathleen Lonsdale Royal Irish Academy Chemistry Prize for 2022. Congratulations and be assured everyone's clapping all around the world now. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah, for sure. Um... Thank you, everybody. I know there may be so many people joining across uh, from different continents at the moment, and uh, it's it's really hard to spell the calcogenides. And I thank you for everybody to take the effort to uh, actually pronounce it. Um, thank you, uh, Royal Irish Academy. Thank uh, thank you to Henkel to sponsor this. Um, prize and it's it's quite humbling and also quite I'm quite honored to be awarded this year's Kathleen Longstreet's prize especially coming from RIA as um, as RIA has been comprised with not all the sectors of our of our uh, society whether it is humanity social sciences and sciences and uh, Coming from such kind of a prestigious institute, it's 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 mind-boggling sometimes. But again, uh, uh, it's it, it's an honor that uh, it it keeps you pushing to do what the kind of work that we do here. Uh, so before, as you've been hearing my name quite a lot and trying to understand what what the actual um, uh, the work that we try to do, but I really want to introduce myself and give you a little bit of a background. Who am I actually? So I come from a country called India and uh, my preliminary, uh, preliminary education has happened in uh, an Eastern part of the country. And then I moved uh, to the Southern part where it's basically where my research career actually started. Uh, it, it's where I had all my pre, all my basic education and uh, traveling half of the globe to start my PhD career in in Ireland, thankfully, and uh, that's when I that's when I had a full fledged understanding of what's uh, what's happening uh, in the in the in the area that I was working, especially on environmental sciences. Finally, I moved to uh, moved across the pond, which is in uh, UK, and uh, I had spent my postdoctoral time at the University of Glasgow. And now, finally, I'm here at uh, London Met uh, Metropolitan University as a lecturer working here. 
so that gives you a quite a little glimpse of, of, of my traveling time across this last couple of years, especially in the research world. I want to get, understand you a little bit of more of the work that I've been doing here. So this starts back again, talking uh, much further when I was in an, a simple undergraduate, this is an undergraduate work that, uh, that was done uh, related to a silver nanoparticles and how these can be used as uh, calorimetric detectors for uh, pesticides. So you can use them as uh, uh, just to see visually and visually confirm the presence even at, at, uh, at, at, at a very minute level. Uh, this is the first time that I was working on something related to nanoparticles and then progressively as I'm moved to my uh, the next step which is on in the masters so as as the as i moved to the next part of my career which was on a masters project where i was working on two dimensional nanomaterials which is of graphite carbon nitrides a sister of a graphene kind of uh, systems where uh, where i first time heard the term of photocatalysis in my entire entire time. So a photocatalysis for in a layman term can be explained as any materials when they are exposed to sunlight or visible light, they produce something, a small creatures called reactive oxygen species. And these species play wonderful activities. Like uh, in this case, we tried for antibiotic degradation. Uh, following to that, uh, what what happened is that we used it for multiple application a uh, multiple uh, composite structure formation, and uh, thereby when I moved to moved to um, Ireland for my PhD work, which is the next step, um, it was Professor uh, Suresh Sepilai's group, which was heavily renowned in this in this work, and uh, he was working on something material called titania. So titania are commonly used in the in the uh, in the paints and also in uh, sunscreens and whatnot. So we tried to couple them into the famous uh, eternity calcogenites. So these kind of composites are extremely novel, first of all. And in this time, what we try to do is that we we uh, we we not only try to have more uh, one application, which is the antibiotic degradation, where pharmaceutical effluents are a primary concern these days as a toxic effluent. We also use them for uh, um, green hydrogen application, which is a hydrogen generation using visible light, and also for antimicrobial disinfection application. So in this, the highlight of the work was that um, that we were able to actually make different phone, different types of ternary calcogenides, a composite with the titania, and then use it for multiple application at the same time and try to understand the efficiency of these compounds. So uh, the unique work also pers persisted in the way that the, we also did the theoretical estimation. That means you try to computationally assess these materials materials along with these kind of applications. So that actually gave an overall understanding of these, uh, of these materials and their potential to be used in these kind of multifaceted application. Following to the PhD work, I moved to the uh, UK for, um, for my postdoctoral work in University of Glasgow in 2020, that's during the pandemic. And um, uh, I was introduced to the world of printed electronics where I was working to use the kind of materials background and my, my preliminary degree in nanoscience and nanotechnology to be used for flexible electronics and also to use them for different, uh, making different kinds of sensors. Uh, pre predominantly electrochemical sensors and also use them for in a more energy based applications. As we go along, uh, we have these, uh, these materials were used for multiple applications. So one is the as used for humidity sensor where you can use as them for wireless humidity monitoring for multiple application as you can see them for soil humidity monitoring and skin humidity and whatnot. The next application was also used for bioanalytic analytes detection, which I'm currently also doing that. Uh, the final one which I tried was the using them for these kind of same materials for pH sensing application and also again using the, the wireless communication system just to use a uh, 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 I use a different approach where you can monitor the pH across uh, say a very big farm and whatnot. 
the, finally, uh, at London Met, I'm trying to use uh, the whole, the entire expertise of the of my work uh, in printed electronics um, and also my work pre previous work on photocatalysis and energy application based storage for other pro and to develop different projects out here. So that's what I'm doing at London Met at, the, at this time. Again, uh, it, this has been a whole journey with it, this could not be possible without few people around, not even few, there are loads of people to thank. Uh, at the very right hand corner, you can see my um, supervisors, Professor Suresh Sipilai and uh, uh, Dr. Elish Breen. They've been the, the backbone of my journey, first of all. And uh, on the left hand corner, you can see the, the at the very top, the uh, my team, our team at um, Glasgow, at the University of Glasgow, and also uh, my new team here at uh, the small, lovely uh, CPS family at the bottom end of the corner. Uh, so yeah, they they've been they they are one of the fundamental people who I need to thank for what I'm right now. Uh, finally. Um, there are other people, uh, there are loads of our collaborators, which are all across the globe, whether it is in cost, um, uh, Saudi Arabia, or is it, is it in University of Cincinnati in a US, um, multiple collaborators in India and also across the other parts of UK, uh, who've been kindly been um, uh, uh, supporting all throughout my research across the, during my PhD and postdoctoral time, um, I I cannot um, emphasize enough the enough the importance of having uh, funders like uh, um, Mary Curie uh, during my time in University of Glasgow and my PhD time as IT Sligo bursary and right now as an ATU Sligo. And uh, uh, finally, I need to thank the uh, Royal Irish Academy RIA to organize the ceremony and Henkel to sponsor this. Um, my host institute right now, my employer, London Met, always been there uh, now. And uh, finally, to my parents, my in-laws, my husband, everybody who've been there in this part and this and this uh, entire journey. Thank you. And um, and thank you for everybody to join the ceremony, even though it's even though it's online. Great. So congratulations again to Priyanka on winning the Kathleen Lansdale Prize. And thanks so much for sharing your journey. It was really a very, very interesting um, presentation. So congratulations also, of course, to your academic mentors and to, to your family, to your in-laws and, and your, your parents. And of course, thank you again to all of those who've made this event possible. The ambitious chemistry scholars, their supervisors and mentors, and the university schools and departments around the island of Ireland who encouraged them to aim for this prize and who support them in all their academic endeavors. So we look forward to hearing from the next round of applicants. So anybody who's watching who can apply, please please consider doing so and, and check out the um, Academy's website to, to look at uh, various in, inspiring um, uh, date, um, information. Okay, so we're going to leave you um, today with the story of one of Ireland's greatest chemists, Kathleen Lonsdale. Um, who Priyanka is following in the footsteps of. And we're going to hear about Kathleen as told by the historian and author, Dr. Linda Lunny. My name is Linda Lunny. Until I retired 18 months ago, I worked in the Dictionary of Irish Biography, which is a project of the Royal Irish Academy. Kathleen Lonsdale got one of the over 9,000 biographies that we wrote for that publication. Along with a colleague, Andalini, I worked on her life. Why should we remember Kathleen Lonsdale? Why is this prize named in her honour? And why, more generally, should we remember her in Ireland? She hadn't the best start in life, at least to outward appearances. She was born in 1903, the youngest of 10 children in Newbridge, County Kildare. Her father was an Englishman who was the town postmaster, but he had a drink problem. And when Kathleen was only a small girl, her mother separated from her father and took her family of 10 children to England. Four of the children died in infancy, but Kathleen made a great success of her education. She got the top county scholarship to go to high school. And when she was 16, she was able to go to attend Bedford College for Women in London. 
The Nobel Prize winning crystallographer W.H. Bragg was the external examiner on Kathleen's outstanding final degree exams and he was so impressed by the diminutive and very determined young woman that there and then he asked her to join his group in University College London to study the crystals of organic compounds. She developed novel techniques and insights and she was able to confirm the structure of the benzene ring, which was something that had puzzled scientists, including Bragg, for more than 60 years. Another major contribution was her compilation of essential reference tables for X-ray crystallography. So, we should remember Lonsdale for more than her contributions to chemistry, acknowledging her importance as a role model for women. And she was someone who made practical recommendations on the changes to society that would make it possible for more women to work in science and industry. And still, that isn't all. In 1935, she and her unusually supportive husband, Thomas Lonsdale, became members of the Society of Friends. And as Quakers, they opposed war. But Kathleen Lonsdale refused to register for war work and thus was sentenced to a month in Holloway Prison. Her experiences of the dire conditions led her to become a campaigner for prison reform. Later, she also became internationally known as a leader in movements opposing nuclear testing and armaments. And to finish with, something to think about. A quotation from Lonsdale herself, which is at least as relevant today to young and to old scientists, at least as relevant as it was in the 1950s. I believe in good, not just as a hypothesis, but as absolutely fundamental to all my way of life. A scientist should take interest in national and international affairs, not as a politician, but in making sure that facts are properly known and trying to ensure that science is used for good and not for evil purposes. <laughs>